Okay. Can you hear me? Let's see. Test, test, test. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. Okay. There's a ladder. No, unfortunately, that's foresight. <laughs> <laughs> Work is there, we can this. But I'm pretty sure it'll work. Windows K, right? Yep. And then it extend there. Oh. Extend. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh. I'm at two. Oh. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, we can just switch that. And actually, it might be that we, since we rebooted this and this was thinking this so I could do it today and then hit disconnect. Oh, okay. I don't want to get to it. I'm starting. As cool as this is, it's not quite as reliable as that. Right. Once it's going, it's great. Yeah. And I don't because usually I'm right up here, you know, because of my just have a six foot cable. Oh, okay. Uh, so should I? Yeah, go ahead. I'm up there. This way. Yeah. Um, then uh, extend, right? Uh, no, we want to do duplicate. Yeah. So it copies sure. everything you have on your screen. That's a little weird. Maybe I got to update the firmware or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're always putting like updates on it. So okay. we're just getting this cable in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. That could be long enough. I'll, uh, I'll get a uh, stand. Yeah, that's fine. All right, all right. Okay.
Hello, how are you? Hi, Penny, I'm Ken Duggan. Hey, Pam, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Green, I'm going to mute this one because uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to put a um, webcam on his computer. Can you hear me, Zane?
Hey, Zareen, can you hear me? Well, nope, maybe not. So I've been reading. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Yeah. Hello, hello. hello. Uh, no, maybe. So it's wild. Yeah, that's a big one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to plug this into here. here. Yeah, yeah. So you can do whatever yeah. you need there. Yep. Okay. And then we'll okay. uh, Really, actually, a great. This works good. Yeah, we have a lot of great talking points with nice. my clients. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. and just reinforcing who I like and don't like in terms of cool. service. You know, they won't be able to see. So, yeah, all good. Can we roll this back just a little bit? You're on on screen right. there. Okay. Yeah. There you go. How's that? Uh -huh. Perfect. Cool. So then you'll be your people online will be able to see you there. Oh, okay. Um, should we go? Thank you so much. And I'm Ken, by the way. Okay. I think we met once. Right? Oh, yeah. What's it? I think we met last time you did this. So oh, maybe. Well, well that's the first time I've done it here. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie. Julie. Brad. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm the lunch partner. Cool. Brad, that's the awesome. lunch makes everything work. Oh, that's such <laughs> a valuable person. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Aroma. Give them a guys. You guys. Yep. Well, it's so darn hot outside. I just didn't want to bring in yeah. any food. Well, and I didn't really. Say, I didn't sign up to the class because I was supposed to have a meeting today. No. Oh. But it's hard to draw on one. Well, feel free to have any money over here. Uh, okay. Are you going to be behind there most of the time? Yeah. Okay. That way, I'll just. I could. Can. Yep. I'll be right here. So nice. Yep. Well, I think we're all set. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I just renewed my license, so I don't even need the credit. But I'm not as well. I mean, this starts well, well for me. Yeah, like, you know. Um, but you know, yeah. honestly, the inspection thing is just our biggest thorn in our side. I mean, it is just well, just dealing with all the rules. And you know, here's the problem too. Truthfully, there are some people that know they have problems and they really just don't disclose them. Mm -hmm. Most right. of the time, especially if you have anybody older, oh, uh, yeah. they don't have a clue that something's wrong. Most people don't know if there's something wrong under their house unless something happens up above that that yeah. tells them um, that yeah. 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 So it's you know, trash can. Oh, for lunch. Oh, for lunch. We have like a little bit. Yeah, no. That's right, Sally. I'll just bring the one from my desk. I can bring. Uh, How things? Things are going great. Good. You wouldn't believe how many of these clouds I've got set up. Hey man, anytime you want me to assault a partner, okay. I've been your girl. All right. right, well, that's the deal. Yes. Well, I am on it. Like inspections, they're a big deal. Big deal. Okay. And, and I, uh, that's, that's why I'm doing this because, especially for the new agents, yeah. they don't know anything about this. I know. Perfect. And then, yeah, they don't know what a federal Pacific panel is. No. So why it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't even know what a GFCI is. I know. So when they, that's just yeah but you know what my my uh electrician said i'm not the afcis at my house what's the difference afci protects equipment gfci is equipment oh, yeah. Yeah. Protect people our right? fault breakers. Oh, work. Okay. Yeah. yeah yeah afci our oh, fault. Okay. they're the breakers in the in the panel uh, in the common areas of the house that we built so now they do like, yeah. we're more to the yeah. we're like the living room and the bedroom is required now okay direct requires us to call it out uh -huh. no matter how old the house is no, 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 no. No. And so it's a code thing really well uh, i mean it's just a safety thing yeah we don't do code at all about anything with code it's not we can't even say the word code really inspection we're not code inspectors Big difference between oh, change in day to day. I can't right. It's code. Right. <laughs> Everything's all code. code. What does Trey tell me to say? Right. What's safe? Well, and I'm with a friend of a working company. I have to tell you all about it. 
minutes. I know. Yeah, I've used you. Have you? I've used you twice. Thank you. Oh, you recently. Perfect. Um, yeah, with both of my clients, they don't want you. Oh, no. Because they don't like this. Right. They don't want the contractors. But they want you to use your own. Yep. That's, that's the hook for me, man. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, my job is, yeah, yeah just go out and read re educating. And then, like you said, with new agents, to show them that there is definitely value for the owner. Oh, got it. So when you give will use their own contractors, then, uh, okay, so let's say there's a, a leak or a whatever. Uh, do you have a leak permit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything we cover has a dollar amount attached to it, a clean benefit amount. Okay. And that's why we don't get all into the, we'll cover this, but not that. There's none of that conversation happens. If we listen to the technician and what that technician says, and he says, here's what I need to do to repair it, here's what's going to cost. We say, okay, here's what we're going to pay towards that cost. And if the homeowner agrees to it all, then the work gets done and we pay that contract with the credit card. Okay. In the house. So you pay the cost. We do. Yeah. yeah there's no, no reimbursement. Only time that comes up is that if the contractor for some reason can't take a credit card, then he'll, we can the homeowner can pay and then we can reimburse the company. That some of the contractors like yeah handyman don't like to take credit cards yeah because it costs them so much right mm -hmm. and we can work we can um, PayPal Zelle we can have, we have all of that available too so whatever works best for the contractor that's good. Yeah. wow but you're right uh, agents are just you know. They got out of the habit of caring what the home inspection said because they didn't, you know, people were just so damn desperate to get in the house. Not even yeah. there. And then they come in the house and they're like, I paid how much over for this house? <laughs> Maybe I should get over. Oh, they're skipping money. inspections. Yeah, I never let anybody say appraisals. Appraisals are less important than the home inspection, I think. Oh, it, yeah, because in the market we've been in, mm -hmm. you know, the, the answer is. Yes, you're probably all paying. And if it's multiple offers and you won, you paid more than all these other people that did. Yep. Probably. Right. And so it's just how long are you going to be here? Right. I know how much you're going to need. Yeah, that's a good conversation yeah. to have. There's no easy way around it. True. But uh, we're still at multiple offers on some things. But yeah, some like price points definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got three houses in my neighborhood. I live in Rockwall. Mm -hmm. You know, nice thing. Mm -hmm. And those three houses have been on the market now for, they're in the 600 to 800. Mm -hmm. And they're just they're they're sitting there. there. That's the other reason you can't just read the paper and look at the stats because it all goes so specifically never to find out because. And I think people are now they're looking at houses that they don't have to do anything to. They don't want to be out of They don't want to remodel. You know, they yeah. want it moving right. right. That's true. Ah. I don't want to do it to that again. I've done a bunch. Yeah. Well, the cost of remodeling is really oh, high. I can only imagine. Yeah. And I had to replace the sewer line at my son's house. Oh. And Chuck Homer apologized to me, so you know, everything's expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the equipment, everything they use. That's why we offer sewer scope inspections. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I bought this house a year and a half ago, and I was my worst client. Um, <laughs> because I just, it was a good deal, as yeah. it was, you know, yeah. older people. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of what it was. Yeah. As long as you know that going in. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, we probably could have went to law for a while, but my son and daughter all can't afford they cost us a little bit. Well, that's why I have that on as an endorsement to my homeowner's insurance. They're they have utility on in endorsement. And it's very cheap. And it's uh, forty thousand. I opted for the forty thousand dollar coverage. Good thing. And it helps me out in four hundred dollars a year to the most. That's a good idea. Yeah. And that's a very good idea. Um, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, because the down rate on a sewer line is 25000 
We offered to give a shooter scope of 250 bucks. You're trying to move them? It's probably not everybody's using Oh, I get it. My plumber, everybody can't work. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. More than we do. Hi there. I'm sorry. Julie Jennings. Thanks, Pablo. Yeah, thank you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing live. Absolutely. You should have kind of got large. Here we go. It's a hundred and ninety million. It's a hundred and yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm going to be standing up here, so I'm going to move all my stuff out of the way. Oh. We have a training room, but I feel like when we get on hybrid, this is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's not so like everyone's spread out. Yeah. We went down there first, honestly. It was like, it's right there. Oh, yeah. So I think uh, I have a uh, paper to pass around to put the information on, so I can give you the CD credit. Okay. Perfect. So sign in sheet. Sign in sheet. Very Great. high tech. <laughs> it's easy to do it. I'm a simple guy, but it's a... absolutely. Of course, everyone will join us at like 12 and 3. Oh, yeah. Wait, you want our name printed or, or signature? Just, just. Trended, yeah. so I can make sure and read it. <laughs> yeah. Usually, I look up the number and it's up. Yeah. Right. Yes. But I want to make sure yeah. that I can put in the right person to see credit. That's right. This will be good. I'm actually coming out with some other subjects. I'm uh, going to be offering actually how to read an inspection. Good to just send in the track. Application. That. How's that process going? Are they getting the faster? I, or it was I said it just a week ago. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I. Once you get your license, it's not. It's getting a license is what takes forever. Uh -huh. oh. I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to be doing my septic systems. I'm going to be a lot. Probably put the whole thing. Yeah. So I said it's a. It, I'm getting asked almost daily yeah. to do a CD class. Perfect. Oh really? So, oh yeah. I got on this. I got ten. Or on, I got no this one. I got ten already for next month. Oh my wow. goodness. And I keep getting people calling me and you're saying, hey, y'all, come in here. I want to just come on. Yes, I'm going to have one. I don't come across me. I, I, I can't think of the last time I had a second to Dallas. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you know, usually they're very rare things. Not in Dallas. Yeah. There's some in South Dallas. The old oh, old. yeah. Mm. Can I have a question for you? What percentage of the time is the agent at the like review of the inspection? Deal? I would say 70 to 80 most of the time. Especially if they're new. Because, Especially if they're new. Mm -hmm. I'm always at the VA. Especially if they're new, I, I really push them there. Uh, if they want to do stuff and they're working with us. Yeah. When they're new, they learn so much more when they're at the inspection. Right. Oh, yeah. Just getting the report and looking at it, going, Oh, uh, what is it going? Yeah, no, I, I like to put a start of the Yeah, so you're to explain it for me. Somebody that don't want to come, well, yeah, I'm going to go look at something. Be, you can say it, but it's better if you go look at the problem so it's better yeah. if you're in the house. And when everybody comes at the last, we, we always say, Come to the last hour, mm -hmm. don't come at the beginning, yeah. come at the last hour, we'll be done. Then you spend a whole hour with them. You can know, you actually print it out, the report and all that, and go through the report right there, page by page, and walk them through the home and point out things. And then everybody's, then it's done. And we don't get questions later. You yeah. know, like, what do you mean by that? So, mm -hmm. you just do it faster. So, anyway.
And what do you do? You, how often do you get asked to go back and reinspect something? Um, probably uh, out of well, we do over a hundred inspections a month. Probably we get five to ten reinspections out of a hundred. Oh, okay. yeah. That's pretty low. It's pretty low. But you know, I always typically reinspect the uh, month off. Yeah. I mean, most of the time I don't have to sell a computer or repair. Mm -hmm. I'd rather give a credit. That's how I do it. Yeah, it's not really easy to do that, especially because timing of it is uh, can be difficult to get out there to do it. Which is really easy. What's the charge for a reinspect? We start at about 225. Do a reinspection, depending on how big and how many things they want, a little bit more. Okay. We can try to get the same guy to go out there. Yeah. You just add to the inspection report the reinspection part. We don't modify the report at the origin. We just add. So we ask for a list of items. So that way we get a list and we know exactly what to come back and inspect and not guess. Yeah. Do it all over again. Some people just say, do it all. Well, send me the list. <laughs> Do you ever have if someone is getting like a new roof or a new AC system top to bottom mm -hmm. and they think they might sell within a year and they pay an inspector to come out and just look at it while the contractors are on site to make sure they did everything correctly? I'm sure you get somebody, we don't do that, yeah. but um, you know, the roofers, the so anytime we see a problem with you know, like a roof, we recommend a roofer to come out, do the repairs, and fix whatever needs to be. So when the roofer says yes, it's done, they take kind of precedence over us. Wow. We're the profession, right? So if we go out there and again, it really doesn't make sense to go. You know, because they're the, we just don't. Like go going to an expert. Yeah, yeah, go to the experts. Mm -hmm. We just don't. Yeah, right. Like the roofer is reputable enough that they have some kind of want here to stand on the car. I've had some new builds where the roof has not come back further from the inspector, and I have to have the review of before closing mm -hmm. and reinspecting. So trying to figure out where you could cut off the problems by having inspected and particular things inspected before the main inspection happens. So. And Barry, the city should be doing that too, right? And have inspected. Yeah. And then and then Barry? Uh, yeah. So um how we do a lot about 20% of our inspections are new bills. And you know, we can do the phases. But most people want the final inspection of the new build done before they, the final walkthrough. Yeah. I've seen that a lot Unbelievable. of Unbelievable. Yeah. You're just like, I don't, everybody always asks me, who's a good builder? Who's the best? I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. really keep up with that because all builders make mistakes. Sometimes you're like, oh, this is great. And other times you're like, what? Where are they going? Once the wall's up, you know, or once things are the walls up, you can't see what's really hard in there. It's totally Oh, I'm just thank you. Is there a home warranty for your construction? I do. Yeah. A three year, it starts in year two, it goes for two, year three, year four. And the first year, the builder, correct. Right. Everything's under, under the, you know, manufacturer's warranty, the builder's warranty. Yeah. And it's $900. So it's really affordable for new construction mm -hmm. for three years. Three years. Oh, that's. Um, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. You got plenty of food, Julie. I might have to have me a little bit before I, I leave. Again, I always kind of like, I'm going to give me a little lunch. You should do it. <laughs> Other ones, anyway, there's. I'm not taking it with me. Right? Well, we could go, but it is so hard to estimate, yeah. you know. Oh, I believe me. I've, I do them all the time. Sometimes Gosh. you get. Two and sometimes you get thirty. I used to worry about that, but I don't anymore. I just not like, either. Split it down the middle and go. We just kind of like to get a little bit of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We always have last minutes, which is great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Y'all schedule is so unpredictable. You know, yeah. I don't want to be Thursday lunchtime. Yeah. Well, I'm just honored to be here. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Thank you for lunch. Yeah. Julie. Yes. Thank you. Get some credit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in the middle of my 90 hours. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Are you doing online? Yeah. <laughs>
I within the first two years of uh, mm -hmm. my life, my license. So to do my hours. I'm trying to look at my hours in the day the site was down. Oh, I can look at it for you. I can always send you guys a summary of like what you're missing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I'm really having in-person classes again. But in okay. the building. Mm -hmm. okay. So you should check. Ooh, I might go and check that out. Yeah, if you'll, because I just rejoined the affiliate committee. We right? did. Yeah, that gives us the opportunity to sponsor classes first before, and they're doing uh, new member orientation, GRI, all that. Big crap. I've been, Big I've been, been. I did a realist class. Yeah. Then. There's a new um, requirement that I, I guess I got an email about it. And if you're, you have to do like 90 hours of that event. You do it after October first. One of your classes, one of your three, has to be real estate brokerage, mm. and the three that I signed up for aren't. Mm. That so no, well you have got to finish it by the end of September. Yeah, I get it done. Mm. Yeah, oh. even though my license real estate brokerage. So yeah. so yeah, looking at yours, mm -hmm. like when you get close to renewal, it'll there will be like a link you can. Click through that says view renewal information. I think they just added that. They this year several months ago. The end of last year. But kind of add up when it was your last right renewal. Mm -hmm. So 21, December, December of yeah. 21. So any classes before then, you know, it delineates that better. So you may wear. Yeah. But then, yeah. One, two, three, four. And I think I'm really close. Seven. You've got seven. Okay. You have to make sure that you have three of those are contracts. So there's one. There's another. Two, three. Yeah, you're good there. So you just need three more hours. Yeah. So this will count. So then you'll need two. Hi, Julie. 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 Hi, They'll start showing up. It's still three minutes. Yeah. yeah. This would be I want to make sure that I'm not in any rush. Okay, me neither. That's yep. all. The only thing I really got to clean today. Yep. Got to get my tires in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we got home from vacation and yesterday I went to work and got I had a million things to do, of course. I got in my car to drive to work and it would start. It's like, oh, no. Uh, no road bump. Okay. Got it fixed. I still drive a 2005 Toyota Highlander. <laughs> It's professionally wrapped, you know, but, yeah. you know, my, my local 275,000 miles. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it just keeps on going. Yeah. Well, I buy my inspectors company cars, right? So I buy them little Ford Escapes and have them wrapped. And, and so I they get the new cars. You get old things pulled out. Yeah. How many inspectors do you have working for you? I got four. Yeah. Do you have a marketplace that you cover or you don't go anywhere in the Do anywhere. Within driving Sherman, the Waxahachie, the Fort Worth, yep. East Texas, Lake House. Oh, it's really a uh, interesting concept. So I don't know. How do you get started? Yes. Wow. So, ah, that's a good question. So I started, I launched over seven years ago. This is a franchise. Oh, it's uh, my wife and I bought this franchise seven years ago. Pillar Post is the largest home inspection company in America. And so there's over 500 franchises throughout the U.S. and Canada. So we decided to buy a franchise instead of just becoming Ken's home inspector like most of us. Yeah. Because it's a proven system, right? So I'm telling you, it's the best thing I ever did. You know, I just followed the system and did it. And now I'm one of the top franchises in the nation. Wow, wow. that's great. In just seven years. Yeah. yeah. Well, but you work it. I you work. You work it. I there's a lot of things. That, that's what you got to be in there. No, you got to be face-to-face, yeah. face, yeah. get to know them. I got over a thousand agents that you all Yeah, it's great because the system, how it works, is so different than a normal what home inspectors normally do. The technology, the services. You'll go, we'll, I'll show you all that. I don't want to. Do you always do a store panel? If they want, it's a, 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 it's so uh the track wasn't letting us do that until so I went and took a sewer class, got all my inspectors trained on it. And it's only 250 bucks to do it. Yeah. And that's cheap. I know. 
That's because Plumber come out here. <laughs> you might even get out and watch that. Hey, Sierra and CT, can you guys hear us? Oh, Isn't there? Yes. And we are not seeing your screen on the Zoom. Mean mine? Yes. So it should be here. So well, we see you. But oh, we'll see you don't see the screen. screen. No. Uh oh. What's um, his name? Set it up. Yeah. I kind of need. Or to you, see if that. you want to send me the PowerPoint, I can just. Put okay. It up. Yeah. Oh. How about that? Is that doable? Um. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I'm on okay, so Wi-Fi. Us, so that's good. They just can't see the PowerPoint. So I'm going to get it and share it for you guys. Uh, if you guys want CE credit, CT and Madison and Sierra, put your yep. license number into the chat, mm -hmm. and I will write down your um information here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let me just. Anybody get a cookie while I'm up? <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, yes, but no. I <laughs> know. <laughs> oh, so that path is going back to the green. Green is really good. Green is really good. Okay, you can send me that message. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, you can print it. What recipe? It's. I see salmon bowl. Do we turn it? I'm going to have a brand new company called Lechosa. I'll tell you all okay. about it. Okay. It's a game changer. Here, you'll you'll think about how more teachers are going to do business with you. I think I sent it to you. Perfect. You want to just get going and I'll catch up? I think that's the right one. Okay. Julie, you want to go ahead and do your thing? Do a little commercial here. Yeah. Um, so I, I know Sam, Sam and Penelope are friends for a long, long time, but um, I'm Julie Jones. I am with this brand new home warranty company called Achosa Home Warranty. It's a funny name, but it's a really good, good product. And how we're different than the other home warranty companies that you've ever heard of or been used to or done business with is that we let the homeowner use their own contract. So we are simply the bank in the process. So that, you know, the biggest complaint about home warranties is the claims experience. The contractors, the timing, the denials, all of that, and so the, the guys that started the guys that started this company are um, almost a bunch of OG home warranty people. I spent 17 years with Nature Home Warranty. That's where he, he's from. We know about Naomi Crook, and she sold the company. And which one? Nation. 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 I was with Nation. Okay. Yeah. And Sharon started with the company, retired, and the company she sold it to turned it into American Home Shield within one year. And I was out. I couldn't do it. I can't sell that product. I can't sell that platform. So I had a one year long compete. So I went to title for a year to wipe that out. And as soon as that expired, um, I, I got back into business with these guys and um, just have been thrilled with the experience. Homeowners are so much happier to be in control. They get to use their own people and it's all on their own timing and their own schedule. And like I said, when the job is done, we the contractor calls us and we give them a credit card. We pay for the job after it's done. So it's really revolutionary, in my opinion. Um, my my goal is to rebrand the product and show that there is value in home warranties. Um, there's a couple of opportunities. I know it's if you're a newer agent, you're probably pretty shy about putting that in the initial offer because we think it might put you down a little bit in multiple mm -hmm. offers. Mm -hmm. So if you can't yeah, get it in an oh, initial yeah, offering, uh, the next opportunity is during auction. When the home inspection report has come back and said the AC unit is at the end of its life, it's still working, but it's going to die budget for a new AC. That's when this has been an opportunity for compromise. Oh. Because what does the buyer always say when they see that? I want a new AC. System. No. And what does the seller always say? No, it's, not, it's still working. So this is your compromise. This is not $7,000 from the seller, this is $700. Or a thousand dollars from the seller. That gets you further down the road, close to the closing table. 
Um, if all else fails and it doesn't get into the into the deal, they can still buy it after closing. They can move in, they can look around and say, oh gosh, how much I did a warranty. They still can do that. So there's three different ways to get your buyer protected. And it's with a product that I believe that you can trust. And I'm here, I'm your local rep. I mean, I bet you can't name another home warranty rep. If you are with another company, your buyers choose another company, who are you going to call when they need help? Everybody left the industry and says we couldn't make any money. You know, there was no selling, there's no warranty to be sold, period. And so this is a product that you can stand by. We can write in any zip code in the state of Texas. So lake houses, you know, out wherever you are in Texas, I can write a book. There's no square footage requirements. I can write a condo, a 900 foot condo, or a 20,000 square foot house. The prices are all the same. So if you've got a buyer buying a home that's been recently remodeled and everything is kind of new, you can go with one of these lower cost things because everything we cover has a dollar amount attached to it before it's going to pay. So if you've got a recently remodeled house, everything is less than a few years old, then these low plans are fine to do. If there's less a chance of catastrophic failure in those newer ones. But if you're a buyer is buying a house that AC units more than 10 years old, 15 years old, I would try for these higher price plans. This $1,100 plan that's in the little blue bubble, it's called the Pro Plan. It's $1,100 so a month, I mean a year, and we pay $7,000 towards HVAC replacement. Seven grand. They should have had never done that. Everything, it's just a really transparent way of doing business, in my opinion. Wait, what? I don't see the 1100. You don't. It's a little blue bubble right here. I will email uh, you. I the yeah, I will email you um, a full policy that's got everything on it. If you'll text me your email address to my paper right here. Um, those for, that's for your higher end homes and for higher end clients, I think. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If you do the 775 mm -hmm. with the base price prime plus, yes. you, you still have to do all these amateurs. If you want to. Yes, ma'am. But does the pro plan cover all the add-ons? No. You have add-ons or add-ons. <laughs> these are just the main plans. Yeah. So you you if you think of a pool, you want to put one A you want to put whatever main plan you're gonna choose. But I am a I prefer to talk to your buyers. And the best way to do this is via email. And connect me with them via email and say, here's Julie, she's going to take it from here. I'm going to reply to all, I'm going to attach a PDF to this policy, I'm going to make claim coverage recommendations. I've even got a video that you can click in my email that explains like the claims process, but pretty comprehensive email and it should give you the, the freedom to just know that I'm going to take it from there. Um, and so the last thing I'll mention is that we do free listing coverage. And I will say that a lot of your colleagues in the, in the world out there are talking about free sell coverage in their listing presentations. They don't either know about it or they haven't had to do it or don't care. But if you're mm -hmm. trying to get a seller, you can say, if you list with me, you get this 475 plan for free. It gives them $1,000 in coverage for incidental repairs that need to be done. So for instance, you take the listing on Saturday and on Tuesday, the dishwasher stops working. That's what the seller's coverage is for. And what we are, right. how do they get that again? You just email me the seller's name and the property address, and I'll send you a confirmation. And all I ask is that you connect me with the buyer's agent after auction so I can try to talk into the state with us after closing. So I have all of this in electronic format, including the, the flyer that describes the free seller's coverage that you can put into your listing presentation if you like. Again, just text me your information and I'll send it over. Um, but yeah, any buyers that you've closed recently that you think this might benefit. And then they connect me with them because it's a great way for you to call and say, hey, how's it going? How'd the movement go? Blah, 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 blah. How are things working around the house? And if you get into that conversation, then I can put a policy on So if they don't have a home warranty and they need one, it's trying to do. Yeah, that's exactly and right. And how did you say it works? I know that they could use their own contractor. Mm -hmm. Would you mind walking for that contract? Sure. So when the homeowner knows something isn't working the way they think it should work, they call our 888 number, which is answered 24-7. And we give them authorization to call their contractor. Their contractor comes to the house, he diagnoses a problem, and then the homeowner calls back, puts him on speaker, and my claims department says, what did you find? And he says, this is what I need to do to repair it. Here's what I'm going to charge. And then we say, here's how much the policy will pay toward that repair. It could be all of it, most of it, or some of it. Just depends on what it is. Once the homeowner is happy with that answer, then we say, okay, do the job. The contractor does the job, he calls us back, and we give him a credit card. 
to pay. Okay. And there's a difference as a seller. I mean, the buyer. Mm -hmm. But that's all presented to them up front. There's no surprises. There's no gotchas. There's no, oh, we cover this, but not that. It's a simple flat dollar amount to everything that we cover. It's very transparent. And the call is $100. That's the maximum. Okay. So if their vendor charges $75, they only pay $75. If their uh, contractor charges $125 to come out, they pay $100 and their plan picks up the other $25. But again, it's all explained up front. There's no, there's no gotchas. And there's, you know, a traditional home warranty plan says that they have 48 hours to get to the house. Can you imagine in this heat, maybe 48 hours? Yeah. You know, when you could call your guy and he's there in two hours. That's how this whole product works. And again, I've been doing this for now for 17 years in the home warranty space in Dallas. So I feel like I've heard it all. So you, I can take care of <laughs> I can take care of your, your clients and um, I create all the invoices. I send it to title. I'm a you know one stop shop in that regard. So thanks for having me out, Ken. I appreciate it. Julie, you. thank you. I'll be getting in touch with you later. Yeah, sounds good. And, uh, nice to meet all of you. Thank you. I hope that I can um, help you do more business and have happier customers. Yeah, I have so okay. um I'm just thinking so if I if we had like let's say the service calls hundred dollars. But then they credit you, like you're you know you didn't have home warranty, you were just calling your AC guy and if you do the repair, then we credit the hundred dollars yes. to the repair. Right. So but we don't take the money. You, the homeowner pays it directly to the vendor. Oh, we don't collect it. Oh, okay. okay. So, so that better so thing is paying it to, to, to okay. the contractor. Yeah. So if it's a five hundred dollar job. Then we'll pay the 400 of the homework. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, okay. Or whatever the copay actually is. But, and we do not collect copays on denials, which we did at Nations. The contractor walked in the door, took the money, and said, Here's the denied because the homework, the homework, you won't cover it. Oh, yeah, that's traditional platform homework. They, they get it on the, over the phone before they even send the vendor out now. So that's a pretty pretty bad experience for the homeowner. That doesn't happen. Anyway, we try to make it super friendly toward the consumer. I'm trying to, you know, erase the black eye that American Home Shield has done to this industry. They really <laughs> did a number on, on the on the, on the products, you know, and, and it's unfortunate, and a lot of people don't see value. Uh, I'm trying to kind of rebuild that trust, regain y'all's trust, and just, you know, put it on your house. That's one thing I've never said at Nations. I don't want, I mean, I want you to try it out for yourself. Yeah. You know, I'm happy with that. So that's how confident I am in this product. Again, thanks so much. Great to see all of you. Nice. Happy nice. summer. Hopefully. Thanks for the launch. You bet. Yeah. So it's a good teamwork that Julie and I have created. We uh, work together real good. So anyway. All right. So home inspection. Um so I created this little PowerPoint presentation because I know there's a really big need for understanding what we do and don't do, whether you're experienced or brand new. So um, it, there's a, there is a lot of basic stuff here. So a lot of y'all might know this already, but I just wanted to go over this. I'm going to show you real common defects that are found in the house. I'm going to tell you what we do and don't do and that kind of thing. So. Like I said, I'm with Pillar to Post Home Inspectors. I got four guys on my team. We cover the whole DFW area. But what I really want to do is just do this presentation, and then I'll just briefly explain to you the services that we offer and see if you're looking to add a really good inspection company to your team. But um, so that's my license number in my course. So after make sure everybody signs the thing, I'll, I'll put that in the track within the next day or two so you get the credit. Um, so, so really, what is a home inspection? That's the first question I always want to explain is that it's a limited, non-evasive examination of the condition of the home in connection with the sale of the home. Often, uh, home inspections are usually conducted by a licensed home inspector who is trained and certifications to perform such inspections and follows the TREC standards of practice. Okay. Um, there are different types of home inspections. Uh, most of common is, of course, most of what we do is when they get them under contract during the option period. That's the mostly common, but we can do a pre-listing inspection. That's just, we do those. There's a 12-month warranty inspection on new homes. We do a lot of those. People want to know what's wrong with their house before you know their warranty runs out, so we can give them a report to give to the builder. 
We can do, uh, there's new construction phase inspections. There's a phase one and a phase two, if you're familiar with that. I, I can briefly go with that if you want. There's uh, the, the new builds that are complete before the final walkthrough as well. So uh, we do about 20% of our business is new builds. So we do a lot of rural areas, you know, out we're horny to Frisco, Prosper, they're just building like crazy. So we do a lot of big homes and condos out here too. So, so what's inspected? Um, so the inspector checks for safety and proper operation of the home. The inspector focuses especially on the structure, construction, and mechanical systems of the house and will report on any repairs, defects that are needed. Generally, the inspector checks, you know, the electrical, the plumbing, heater, water heater, insulation, the ventilation, and, you know, in the attic, HVAC system, the water source and pressure foundation, doors, windows, sidings, floors, roofs, and the attached appliances. Basic stuff I'm sure y'all already kind of know. This is, I'll do a lot of brand new agents that don't know this stuff, but it's good to kind of review over because I also like to tell you what's not done. It's not inspected. And I think that's a really big understanding of if your client ever comes back to you and says, why didn't he inspect the fence? You know that that's not part of the home inspection, right? It's things like that. Instead of saying, yeah, he should have checked that. But you know, so the more education you know, the, the better it is. So um, it's a, a home inspection is defined as a non-invasive visual examination of the residential property that is designed to identify material defects with any home structure, system, and components. So here is what is not done. First of all, you know, we, it's not a destructive testing. It's not invasive. It's just a visual examination only, right? So we don't remove drywall. It's pretty obvious, right? We're not pulling up baseboards. So whatever's behind stuff, we can't inspect. So there's, we just don't always see everything. It's not, everything won't always be inspected or found. We don't disassemble components, right? We don't tear apart the air handler, look all inside of it, you know? Uh, we just visually check for it. So um, the uh, we don't issue a pass or fail grade. You know how many times the clients always, I mean, they always wanna know, right? They're buying a big house and, or an expensive house and they want my professional opinion, should I buy this house or not? Is it good or not? Well, we don't do that, right? We just give them the, information so we don't determine a buy or not buy, right that's the last thing you guys want to hear us saying anyway right You're like what what are you talking about don't do that i've heard horror stories agents said i can't believe that agent, that inspector he told them this house is crazy i wouldn't buy it and i'm like what you know anyway um if you have any questions just let me know we're kind of working together i'm just going to keep on going but um so we don't determine what the home is worth so i don't know how much they're paying buying the house for i don't want to know i don't really care to know right and so if they buy it for this much and i get them for it they're like do you think this house is worth it you know do so, people really ask you that yeah oh they asked me to rate it one to ten <laughs> you're like how can i do that you, you know yeah right should i buy this house should i not you know i'm just a non-biased home inspector I am just here to give you the information properly and will inform you of the condition of the home. So we also don't determine boundary lines and encroachments, that kind of thing, right? We don't know how many acres this place is or if there's a barn or a storage shed over on your property, we don't determine any of that stuff. So, um, um, so uh, we do not repair the home that we inspected. That's a big one. So. Inspector cannot offer to repair a home. Uh, it's, in, it's a conflict of interest and more liability on your hands. So think about it. How easy would it be to say, oh, that outlet's not working. By the way, for a hundred bucks, I can fix that for you right now. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want to. If you get caught, you can be trick. Take your license. So um, we always recommend the professional to come out and do it, right? Not Uncle George, a professional, right? So we don't report on cosmetic conditions. We get a little more picky on new builds though on that, but really we don't, if, you know, the condition is like hairs, worn spots, discolorization of the floors, uh, you know, 
cut wallpaper, window treatments, nail holes, scrapes, scratches, dents, chips, minor, dirty carpet, that kind of thing, right? That's cosmetic. Um, we don't determine the life expectancy of the property or the components, how long things are gonna last. Um, but there is an exception to that. <laughs> So it's not required by Trek to say, you're not required to say how much life is left on the roof or the you know, air conditioner. Um, but we do put the age of the unit in the report. That's all we do. We don't say if it's a, you know, if you're buying a 20 year old house, I would want to know how old that air conditioner is. So as long as we can read the label, we'll put that age of the house, of the air conditioner in the report, just to let them know. So it's not proper to say something to the effect of this is nearing its end of its life. Sometimes some people do. And, you know, you can put that in there, but we just tell them if it's working or not. Here's how the age of it. That's all we do because that, that air conditioner could last another 10 more years. I've seen them in the 80 from night. <laughs> so my goodness. And this is where I get the nice, the differentials in the tune. I said, it's working, you know? So I would, if I would have said that 10 years ago, it's at the end of its life, it's still going. So it's kind of, you're kind of putting, you don't, it's, I don't like to do that because anyway, but we, you know, we do the water heaters too. We let them know the age of that, but we can't say the age of the roof. We don't know. There's no date on it. We just know if it's worn out or not, you know? Um, but the water heater and the HVAC have those, the date. Yeah, they have the date. Unless the label's worn off, then we'll just put couldn't read label, don't know the age of it. Um, so uh, we don't determine the life expectancies. All right, so um, we don't determine the president's presence of hazardous materials. That's a big one. That's kind of surprising. But really, a home inspector, we don't determine if there's lead-based paint, asbestos, radon, mold, in the house without proper testing, right? So some of these things inspectors offer as an additional service, It's but not TREC doesn't require you to, to uh, call out any of this stuff. You know, you get you have to do testing, sampling. You have to, to, to know if that's really there or not. I, know, I can tell when there's asbestos in the house, usually on the insulation of, uh, you know, sort of pipes and stuff, but. So if you want that, you need to order it when you order it. You order it. it. Yep. Do you offer any of those? We things? do. We offer only the mold. You Air quality. Mold testing? Yep. We're licensed mold inspectors. Oh, while you're doing the inspection. Yep. Test yep. So right there, you, oh, you see, well, we'll test it right now. Yep. And how many times do you have to send it back to the lab? Yep. Oh, it takes two days to get the results. It's a different report, but, but we can do it. Well, it's probably around 600, something, 650. Oh, really? Okay. It's not too bad, but our lab fees are expensive which we can go over that more in detail, but um, we can do them as a standalone too, separate from the inspector. I just got a call this morning, the guy wanted me to, he Google searched us and found us. Um, we're like one of the top Google searches for all kinds of good stuff, but yeah. So if your client's concerned with mold, we can actually take samples if we see it, or we take air samples with, uh, it's called an aerosol. It sucks in air and it collects the mold spores and we have to take it to a lab and they analyze it and can, comes back and tells us if you got high amounts of mold in a certain area of the house. And then from there, if we if there is an elevated count, because we do one on the outside for comparison, if there's an elevated count in a part of the house, usually we do them in the wet areas in the bathrooms, three or four samples. And then we, when from there- samples, Where do you get the samples from the wall or the air? The air. air. I'll show you actually, I have a picture. Okay, yeah, I, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I got that all in the report. It's a big deal. A lot of people like to do that because most inspectors don't offer that. Um, but we like to offer as, many, as much stuff as possible. But the other stuff, you know, asbestos and radon is not a big issue here. We've never done one. If you're up north, a lot of inspectors do them up there. So you get these people from north and want to come down and say, I need radon. Well, we don't do radon. Maybe there's a couple inspectors that do, but there's not a big demand for it at all. Um, so it's not justifiable, really. But um, other stuff like lead-based paint, you have to take samples off of them. So you can't do that. You can't take destructive stuff. Now there are equipment, material, equipment you can use to test for it. It's an analyzer, it's $15,000. Do test, but anyway. So um, 
we uh, no, we don't determine the presence of air quality, which is what we're kind of talking about. But I mean, we do, but inspectors not required to determine if there's mold all in the house and stuff. Now, if you see, if they don't choose the mold, you know, the or watch, I'll go over my packages here in a little bit. If they don't choose that, but we see mold, I'll put in the report, hey, there's some foreign substance growing here. So we can't they, say mold. Could they tell you that during the inspection so they haven't asked for it ahead of time? You, we can add it. You have, you carry the equipment mm -hmm, absolutely. So they can we can add it just like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because sometimes someone may not have looked inside the cabinets right. and seen. And then you'd be like a lot of so like they, the kitchen cabinets yeah. have leaked and there's mold all under there. Mm -hmm. Can you test the outside number also to compare? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because a lot of times. You have to. You have to have a baseline. Yeah, we do one sample outside. They're like five minutes each. You just suck air into that for five minutes. It doesn't take but 30 minutes to do the whole thing, really, on average. No idea. It's very quick. <laughs> I'm guessing all of these disclaimers are in the packet you sent to the client. Oh, yeah. Send over your oh, yeah. Our lab our limitations. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, and our limitations of what we can do because there's different licensing levels. Sure. And then when you just do the testing only is all we do. That's all I want to do. Yeah. From there, if we have a high count or something like that, you know, an elated concern of the stachybotrys or whatever, there's dozens of molds, hundreds actually. But We'd say you need to send this to a mold specialist. From there, they take over, but they have the information now to help determine what to do to get it remediated. So that's how it works. So we can take that one step to get it to see if they have an issue or not. A lot of people just want everything. I'm buying a house, I have kids, I want everything. Some people just want to do the basic inspection. So whatever they want, we can offer it all. Just check the box when we send them the email. But anyway, um, so moving on, they, uh, there are other, there's a lot of parts of the house that we don't inspect, right? That needs to be understood that we don't check fences, the blinds, um, detached appliances, washer and dryer and that kind of thing. And this is, you know, the refrigerators, if it's attached to the house, you know, like a Viking one, those, yeah. of course, we'll check that. But uh, we don't check uh, retaining walls, not supporting the foundation. Now I will, but it's not required. Um, there's, we don't check the sprinkler systems. That's not a normal part of the, it's not required. It's an optional additional service. Most That's, of my inspectors. Well, they do, we do. I'm just saying it's not required. They do, we do. So it's an add-on. It's, add it's an add additional service. So if you ever look at an inspection report, you'll see on the bottom additional pool. It's got sprinkler. These are optional stuff, right? That just letting you know all this stuff like pools, a detached building. So uh, we, we're like calling to be in, scheduled the inspect, inspection. Whoever's scheduled would say, like, does this house have a pool or a spring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, I have, I have an office staff that we, we look on Zillow usually and get see all the information about it. And my office people will. Ask them, you know, does it have a sprinkler system? A lot of people don't know if it, you know, they're buying a house, they don't know if they have a sprinkler system. But, you know, if they don't know, then I said, well, we'll just still send you the, you know, the, you know, to, to review. And if you want to add it, you can just check the box, you know. So, um, same. Detached borders, borders above a garage, is that considered a detached building? If it's, not if it's attached to the house. No, it's not attached. It's, oh. it's not attached. But like the garage. Oh no! If it's if there's no garage attached to the house and it's just a detached. Well, a detached garage, the quarters above. Oh, the quarters above. If it's not included as part of the square footage, when we see it, and then yes, it would be an additional because it's more square footage and work. So yeah, like a mother-in-law suite or something. But if you call it in. Call in the inspection. Say the house has five thousand square feet plus thousand in the quarters detached quarters. Mm -hmm. then, then we'll add that we'll as go ahead and start out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because the square footage we go by pricing goes by square footage. You know, the, every five hundred square feet we add twenty bucks or something. So we want to. You know, it's more work. Um. All right. So uh, the next thing I want to cover is that we do not turn on the utilities. I'm sure you kind of know that, right? You know how many times we've gone out to uh, an inspection and, and we also don't light the a flame. 
um, lots of liability with that. Uh, I've lit water heaters a lot, I like, but we're not required to. So when we go to a house and the water's not on, I'll call the agent, hey, the water's not on. Oh no, can you turn it on for me? No. <laughs> oh. What they're, what's, why is it on? You know, I don't know. Did they not pay the bill? Is there a water problem? If I open it and turn it on and flood the house, then so we have to come back. Or sometimes they can get them out there and turn it on. But a lot of times the gas won't come, company won't come out and turn on the gas. It takes so a couple of days. What do you charge when that happens? We charge one seventy five to come back to the listing agent or the seller. Seller. Not regarding water, if, if the if you, any utility is not on, and we go out there because when we so do you leave right then when it's no, we still do the inspection and then you come back, we back. come back and finish it. But if it's like a car in the garage, so you can't get into the attic, then we'll just say not accessible, we'll still do it. We'll come back, for we'll come back. But whoever you know, it's the seller's responsibility right. to have all this stuff on, so it costs us money and time. It's common sense, right? We got to come back. So um, sure. it's, uh, it's, but it, it happens pretty often, you know? And so that's why I have created a checklist. I'm going to email y'all a checklist of how to prepare your clients for an inspection and also a checklist how to prepare your home to be listed. It's a nice little checkoff list. If you want to use it, great. But it covers all this stuff, you know, make sure the gutters are clean. To, it's really nice. So a lot of agents like it. So, but anyway. Um, so what additional services are offered? So we kind of went over this, but we can do infrared scanning. If y'all, a lot of inspectors do it. We like to offer, we have three packages that we do, plus a premium and a prestige. The plus is a, just a normal home inspection without any additional stuff. And then we offer a premium, which would add infrared scanning. Now infrared scanning, a lot of inspectors do it, but they only spot check certain things when they might see a problem. We scan the whole house with infrared. What does that do? What is it? Right. This, this is it yeah. right here. What does it tell you? Yeah, it, it tells you a lot of stuff that you can't see with your eyes. It can see in, it sees moisture in the walls. It can see missing insulation. It can see overheating electrical circuits. Wow. So this is a really nice tool that we can find. Actually, I got some pictures in here. I'm going to show you what I found with this thing in a minute. How much extra is that? The, it's only it's the premium or the prestige. So it's a couple hundred more dollars, but there's a lot more stuff that you get too with the premium in addition, not only with this, but we can even do a 360 virtual tour of the home with room measurements, kind of like the Matterport. Yeah. That's included in the in all three packs. Well, it's a smaller version of it. It's not three-dimensional or anything like that but it's still a really nice virtual tour and you get the room measurements. It's a really nice feature that I don't think that anybody can do that, but this is infrared. This is, I don't know if you're, but I just want to show you, there's my hand. So you can see the heat from my hand wow. still from this infrared. So you just go around and we scan the whole house with this and we're looking for anything. See if I see a stain on the ceiling, I can scan that. And if it's a different temperature than the rest of the wall ceiling, then that's probably a leak. If it's dry, it's the same temperature, so there's no difference. So it's a long time ago. Was, yeah, it could have been an old leak or could have, like see, now it hadn't rained in a month. Patches of paint somewhere that you didn't have to see that. Yeah, we, we want to scan everything to see if there's any drafts coming in under the windows. To, I don't want you to be on the other side of my list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mostly, most of the time we don't find much with this. Yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't usually find a lot with this. Don't let it scare you because uh -huh. it is not, it's just, Sometimes you do, but if you see a little leak somewhere, would you want your client to know that, you know, and say, hey, this, because if you don't, this can become a big problem. So, but anyway, uh, we can do pools. We do exterior buildings, mold testing. We can do water testing, take water from the tap, send it off to a lab, see if there's any iron, you know, or lead, all that stuff, all the other stuff with it. We can do a sewer scope. We can do septic systems. These are all optional. Not every, you know, every inspector does it, whatever they choose they want to do. Not all these services are offered by everybody. So but that just kind of gives you an idea of the range of stuff you can offer, which is, no, it's not online, but I, I uh, what we do is there's so many different prices. 
so much for different stuff. You can't really do it because there's every 500 square feet. There's, do you want to add the plus the premium of the prestige? It's just too confusing. But we start at 350 bucks, just to let you know. We're very competitive. We're not the cheapest. We can't, we, 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 uh, we don't want to be the cheapest. We want to be the best. But, you know, our inspections go up to several thousand dollars, depending on what they want and the size of the house. So, um, all right. So, not too often. Not very often at all. Maybe a two out of every hundred. Um, pretty surprising to me, but if you're buying an old house, I'll get everything. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, because you could have old, you know, lead pipes in your house. You know, but, but this is a something that people always ask. What is an inspection cost? So when we get a call that they just want to quote only, we have a really nice email that we send them with the packages of the three packages with the pricing below each one of them, right? And then we have additional services with the pricing for that. Um, we, we do termite inspections at WDIs. We're licensed for all that too. So if you have a VA loan, you know, or anybody who just wants one, we can do those too. But, VA you know, requires termite? Yes. VA requires, we're about to go over that. Um, and so anyway, but the ranges are just tremendous on a home. I've done one that's 350 bucks cheaper even with if they have a VA, if they're a veteran, oops, or, you know, first responder, we give them discounts. Further appreciate Of course, yeah. And, um, but payments, 50 bucks. I know it's not a lot, but profit margin, I think. <laughs> but payment is due at the end of the, at the, before the inspection or, or and the inspe at the end of the inspection. And, um, for the, is due before and after? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Sorry. I okay. Payment is due at the end of the inspection yeah. before we can deliver the report. So if they're not able to attend, we have to we send them a separate email from the inspection agreement that they pay online. So sometimes if they don't pay, we go out, we do the inspection. You know, of course, my office staff is reminding them, hey, you need to pay. And then because you're waiting for it. So we can't send it until it's paid because it's do at the time because um, some people say, can you do it at closing? No, because it might not close. Right? I'm not a bill collector guy, uh, you know? So that's something that, yeah, you have to budget for an inspection, right? That's part of the. Absolutely. You know, we did the work. We've been scammed sometimes and it's ugly, but story anyway so um yeah the uh how long does an inspection take well that's a big one because it depends on the size of the house any additional services they do but we do two a day usually we schedule three and a half hours we start at eight o'clock and then to 11 30 we ask the client to come at 10 30 we do a one o'clock to 4 30 ask them to arrive at 3 30 unless there's some it's a bigger house or then, you know, a 5,000 square foot house, we're going to have to add some more time. But we know how to do all that. And when we get a schedule, you guys get a confirmation email from us saying, hey, your client is going to be there at this time, you know, to review the report. So if you want to attend, you'll know when to come. So um, anyway, so uh, we do them six days a week, not on Sundays, though. Sundays, we like to take a little break. But we do schedule inspections on Sunday. So if you want to call and get one Monday, 90% of the time we do them the next day. So that's a big deal. If you want an inspection done quick, three day option period, I have agents call me all the time. I want to get my, I want to shorten my option period to try to get this deal. Can you do it tomorrow for me? As of right now, yes, call. And so that's why we try to have that kind of, you know, support team inspectors to get it done quickly. So, um, so it's uh, the inspection should be scheduled immediately after the option period. You know that we do print the report on site and put them in a binder and you and it's emailed right after they make a payment. We email it to you. You got it right there. No waiting for it. And with the technology with, you know, pillar to post, like I says, a franchise. So they have the we have our own unique software 
we use an iPad, we're going around. As we're doing the inspection, we can do, we do on the report at the same time. So we'll see a defect, we take a picture of it. I have these canned comments, you just touch the comment, put it in. We like to put the area of where it is, you know, like a lot of windows or something, we'll say in the left bedroom window or whatever, and give you the report right there. So that's a really big deal. Um, nobody else will receive a copy of this report without verbal will. We, all we do is send it to the buyer, the person who signed the agreement. That's who I'm sending it to. And they have to even initialize in the agreement to give you guys a copy of it. And it's never a problem, but that's how strict this information is. You know how many times a seller won't leave, right? When we're doing the inspection, they're like, what'd you find? Sorry, but uh, we just say nothing dangerous, alarming right now for you, but because we want to, we don't want to just say, and, you know, sometimes I say, well, it's a, you know, under contract, I, I can only give this information to the, to the buyer. Oh, so. But. All you have to say to them is everything I disclose to you, you're required to disclose if these people terminate. So. You yeah. Know, you're not gonna they turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. I might've had that. <laughs> But it's 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 a problem all you know pretty often that we have to. What's the problem? The the sellers asking us what they what we found when they're at home, you know, when they're there and they're not leave, they didn't leave, yeah. and so they're asking us, which is a natural question, right? I, I would want to know, but they're not. They should know. The agent should tell them, you know, you can't, you should leave. Most of the time, they do which is nice because when the buyers come, we have to go into a private room and discuss this inspection report and not have them listening in. But you can't, how do you know? If you got security, you know, they could be listening the whole time. Why can't you do it? But. So, but if you found like a gas, gas logs, you turn the gas off. No, I, well, I, I call it, I, in that case, if I would tell the seller, there's a gas leak. You need to call and turn this gas off right now. Right. In that case, yes, it's a safety hazard. But um, otherwise, if it's just normal stuff, but yeah, we yeah. have gas meter detectors and all that stuff. You can usually get a good whiff of it. You know, sometimes when you open a, a a door to where the water heater is, you know, in a closet kind of, you're like, oh, that's a problem. That's when I start calling the agent and says, we got a gas leak. You know, let's get this fixed before something bad happens. All right. Okay, so I just want to show you some common defects found in the house. I know you guys know all this GFCIs, but you'd be amazed at the new agents that I do this. Don't know what a GFCI is. But we're, we're required to test these as long as now if there was a refrigerator plugged into that, I probably wouldn't test it. Because if it doesn't turn back, trip back on, now the refrigerator is not going to come on, and now I'm going to buy them some more food. So you got a comment that refrigerators should not be on GFCI. We do have a general comment that you know that says due to limitation of personal items, that not every outlet might be checked. Right, but I mean, my electrician said you should never put plug a refrigerator into. You should never. Because you won't know that that outlet has tripped until your ice cream melts out on the mm -hmm. floor. And usually the, or if the one is not GFCI in the kitchen for the refrigerator. Okay, yeah. But in the garage, there's a lot of refrigerators that are all GFCI. So that's the ones I don't want to trip off because right. one of them might be GFCI, one of them might just be a regular outlet. But if you trip that off, it trips off the regular because they're branched together. And that might even trip off. And then now I'm like, uh oh, it's not tripping back on. That refrigerator's out. So if there's a refrigerator in the garage, I'm not testing. I don't want to. Wait, you, know, you, you don't know. test them if there's a refrigerator in the garage. Uh, if there's, the yeah, because if, if yeah, because it might not trip back on, and now the refrigerator won't come back on, and and so it's you see what I mean there's uh, the but how do you even get to the refrigerator the GFC if it, uh, that's where the refrigerator I don't know how you can oh so it. let's say there's one here and then the refrigerator might be plugged into a, another outlet over here but if I trip that one off it might trip this okay. one off too that makes sense. because they're branched together so right you just leave that yes I just say I'd still want to plug in my tester and make sure it's wired and there's power to it 
because there's a, this tester what lights up different colors and stuff. And you push this little yellow button to simulate a surge and it trips off the GFCI. So, but we go around doing all those and are required in all these areas of the wet areas of the house. So if you have a house built in the nineties or even late eighties, they're not in all these areas because they just started doing them and just like the kitchen only. Then they added the bathroom if several years later, then they added the garage several years more later. So, but we still call them out if they're not there, even though it was normal then. So there's a problem. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think I don't think you have to be in a specter to see that's a problem, right? <laughs> no, I went in, I did that. That's I was like, man, I gotta check. I've never seen one this crazy. You know, for all I know, this still could have been fixed. They could have repaired the foundation, but they just didn't repair the crack in the wall. So the foundation comes out company and they level the house but they don't ever fix the cracks in the brick right so i don't know i don't have the paperwork so i still call it out as hey you need a foundation guy <laughs> but here's a picture under the house so i'd just like to go into there and crawl around that's kind of crazy isn't it but i like to show you this is the stuff that we see i know you see probably pictures of it but to crawl around under there it's like kind of moisture and there's wiring you can only do so much right for i'm it's, it's judgment call right my inspector says that's as far as i'm going to go because i don't want to be crawling under that fine we do have a limitation says hey we can't get under there for safety reasons and check the whole thing but you can see um well we need to have a foundation guy see how the mud <laughs> you just plop. walked away then because she needs to Scraps to oh, yeah, and then they kind of put some, I don't know what. Oh, there's some crazy stuff we see. I mean, I've I've seen packs of armadillo under there. I've seen snakes, cobwebs in my face. I mean, just water, you know, wiring. It's like, that's some dangerous, crazy stuff. So, I have, I did. It was like, there's four. I'm just hanging out. I'm, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Anyway, I like I do I do TikTok and stuff, you know. So if you get on my TikTok, you can watch the videos of the stuff, crazy stuff I see. It's pretty cool. I get lots of views from that. It's really cool. But this is, you know, these the excess under the house, you know, in a closet, the old homes, you know, you lift it up and you have to kind of crawl under there if you can. Well, obviously I wasn't on this one. So this is a house that I went in and it was flippers. They bought they they took this house inside, beautiful. Flooring, new appliances, new paint. Get this young couple coming out. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And then I look under there, I'm going, Is that the, this, it's this much water under the house. Turn beat. Mm -hmm. And that's How actually that? inappropriate ground slope away from the house, rain. Did they walk away? I don't know. I don't know if they do. I give them the report and then they're still considering when I leave. So the only time I'll know if they ever buy it or not is if I get another call from them again saying I need another inspection on their house. We didn't buy that one. Hmm. We've done four inspections. I had one time. That was one of the first things he looked at. He went into the house. It was pretty much water. He said, you know what? I'm going to charge you 200 bucks and not write an inspection. I will not buy the house. Really? Yeah. He said that? Yeah. I would never, ever say I that. that he did, and they appreciate it. <laughs> I just, that blows me away. Blows me away. Because this can be fixed. Right? It can be fixed. There were all kinds of issues. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. What happens if that's the only house they can afford to buy? And you're telling them not, not to buy it. Well, okay, yeah, but it could be. I don't know. He didn't know. I mean, you know, but this is a sump pump. You know what that is, right? Well, obviously it's not working. <laughs> Supposed to pump the water out. So all kind of problems can happen with that. Mold, wood rot, snakes. Anyway. So this is a new one I threw in here recently about arc fault, AFCIs. Y'all get this, y'all know. You hear this stuff all the time yes. called out now on inspections? Yes. Which I hate it. Yes. I'm with you. Absolutely. I don't want to call this stupid stuff out, but Trek says you got to. So I'm like, okay. And so this is what you got to see in a breaker, in a panel. 
the breakers now need to be these little trip off test buttons, the arc fault for the common areas, bedrooms, blender room, oh, not blender room, uh, living that's room. Do, that. Yeah, that's why, you know, I try to throw some stuff in there with y'all experienced ones, you know, that this is something that you're going to see all the time. Has to be arc fault in a breaker now. Well, it doesn't have to be, but which is a call out. Call out meaning defective. Um, my big thing is always the gauges don't match what's going into the box. You know, the, the wire gauge is different. From the wire size is, is the I mean, wrong. Con that's a constant problem. You yeah, know, you got a 20 amp breaker. Even on a newer box. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, there's all kind of electrical. You almost have to be an electrician well, to know how to inspect these things. We have to remove the cover. But anyway, this is uh, something that's, yeah. Of course, the roof, you see that's hail damage. That's pretty obvious, right? Oh. We're supposed to check for hail damage that you can see, right? Sometimes you might not. So you guys see. don't go on the roof? Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. Oh, okay. I thought you said not required. So We're not required not to be on the roof. But you're not. We can view it from, as long as it's safe and accessible. Okay. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of these roofs you can't. I mean, the, you know, okay. get up on the edge. Nobody can get up on a roof. Not every, for every roof. But yeah, we absolutely do. I really stress doing that because you get much more better inspection done. So if you have an inspection done on the day that it's raining and you guys can't get on the roof, would you say we'll come back or just call a roofer? No, nah, we don't come back, but we we, we call a roofer. They can pay you yeah. Back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's just best at that time to have a roofer come out yeah. then because we do not, but I know some inspectors do. Uh, and it's really cool. I've seen people do it, inspectors do it. Um, there's some pluses and minus to that. But um, anyway, but uh, I think it's better to get up there and visually see it. And of course you can see we always call out tree branches touching the house, you know, nails, exposed nail heads, little th stuff. Well, those are just shingles missing, right? Yeah, those are just shingles. And that's hail. And that's hail, and that's just a tree and that goes. close to the house. Sometimes you see a tree branch cut off, and you look, and you see the damaged shingles. So they cut it off a little too late, mm -hmm. you know, because it's rubbing on the shingles, and you're like, oh. See, maintenance, yeah. maintenance. You'd be amazed what people don't do to their house. They don't take care of it. You're just like blown away, man. Yes. You're walking in, you're like, oh my gosh, they want to sell this place? That's why I have a nice checkoff list. You know, you how many times I've going in, the filter hasn't been changed out in years. I'm like, okay, well, that kind of tells you right there. If you don't even do that, what else am I going to buy? You know? Anyway, this is the electrical panel. We like to remove the cover if we can. Because sometimes you see a cover, the refrigerator's in front of it. So this is part of my checkoff list, is like move stuff out of the way for your listing so the inspector can get to it, right? It's a big problem. Because I'm buying a house and, I, and if you see it not inspected because there was personal lines blocking it, I'm like, well, I wanna know. So prepare up front, shelving blocking, the panel cover painted, you know, they somebody people paint the panel. You know, so well, I can't open that up now because I'm doing destructive. Right? And then um, aluminum wiring. See, uh, that's a. Well, let's see if it's copper or aluminum, right? They put aluminum wiring in the housing in back in the '70s. Aluminum wiring is not as good as copper because it expands and contracts more when it heats up and cools down, and it can create a loose connection. Much easier than copper. So that's why they stopped doing them because they arc and fires from aluminum. So if you see, if we see that, probably the insurance company might make him fix that. Sometimes the insurance companies, what I've heard, won't even approve because you have aluminum wiring. Are now, you still seeing a lot of that? Yes. Well, pigtail, right? you, all you can do is pigtail them, right? It's an easy fix. It's a it's a piece of copper wiring, right? So you pull out this wire. You don't have to rewire the whole house. All you have to do is pull out this wire, get a piece of copper wire, right? And you do a wire nut, and then you put and you put in the copper wire, and you're fixed. So the only issue is it's at its connection. Actually. Yeah, at the connection of the breaker. That's Who the only. That? Can I hand you electrician. You have to have an electrician do that. 
That's all in my comment, in my review. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I may be wrong on this, but I heard once that your insurance company can deny a claim if you have had electrical or plumbing repairs done by non-licensed people. Right. Or any, any repairs done okay. that were supposed to be done by a licensed person that weren't. Okay. Because, yeah. like, if you had a fire and you had a hand mm -hmm. that yep. you were wiring, uh, it'd be like, oh, well, that's, that's a problem because you didn't use somebody. Right. Yeah, so. That may be wrong, but that's hard. Makes sense. Yep. But that's uh, not real common, but just to be aware of easy fix though. So you don't, it's not going to be a freak thing because we, the way we present this to them is not alarming the way it's because we explain it to them. It's an easy fix and electrician come in here and do it in 30 minutes, you know? So it's not expensive either, but we also see a lot of this. So that's the bus bar. And then you got your neutral wires going into that bus bar and then electricians, they like to put two wires or more into one connection, which is fine. It still performs properly, but track says, no, you need to only have one wire into each connection. So there's an empty one up here. They could just pull that wire up, put it in there and get fixed. But there's so many there. That, and, and sometimes there's not enough room. So it's the too small, so not much you can do about it unless you replace the panel, which is not feasible. You fix for that? Huh? You just are aware of it and move on. Yeah, yeah. Just say, hey, look, I'm just required to call this out. It's functioning fine the way it is, but it's supposed to be one per connection. Oh, okay. It's functioning fine. Gotcha. You know what this is, right? Somebody mentioned it, Federal Pacific. Let's see these little red breaker. That's when you, usually there's a big sign on there, Federal Pacific. So Federal Pacific is a company that installed millions of these panels from the 50s to like the 80s all over the country. And guess what? They created some problems over time. Zimco also. Yes, Zimco, yes. Sylvania. But we don't see a lot of those. This is what you see mostly here, Federal Pacific. So we automatically just say, we don't even remove the panel on those. We just say, you need, it's probably, it's not up to current standards anyway. And you just need an electrician to come out here and look at it because it's a federal Pacific. It's an automatic call out from what Trek says. What are those called again? Federal Pacific. Federal Pacific. Yeah, Federal so Pacific. The panel has to be upgraded. Uh, evaluated. Doesn't have to be upgraded, but we, we don't say that. We just say an electrician evaluated. But most people want to get that replaced. My parents had yep. when we, my brother didn't believe me that we need to have negotiate that. And, yeah. Well, the electrician will tell you they haven't had any problems in the last 50, 60 years, 70 years, yeah. however long it's yeah. been here. Yeah. You know, it's probably fine. However, they will pay for it because the next person that comes to buy the house mm -hmm. is going to say, I want you to yeah. replace the barrel. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's some it's years that are better than others. I had the inspectors tell me that. What's that? Certain years are better than others. Oh, oh, I, I, yeah, that's a little bit real detailed, but you know, t overall, they're all that should be looked at, no matter what, because you know, there's been house fires from them, there's been deaths and stuff, so that's that's why. Um, anyway, so and then the the far left one there is two wires going into one breaker. You see that all the time. Somebody will add some wiring. Instead of adding a breaker, they'll just put a wire in another breaker, which not designed to do. So we kind of say, no, no, you should uh, put a breaker there and not have two wires there. So, but you know, we check the overhead power lines and stuff like that too. The service drop, it's called to make sure it has to be a certain height in the air. These old homes, they come down right underneath the eaves. You can almost reach up and touch the power lines, right? Well, it has to be at least 10 feet in the air. Who fixes so, that? Electrician, you have to extend. So here you have to. So usually on the really old homes, the service drop will come under here, yeah. underneath the D here. And it's too low. So it's like you know, raking or whatever. It's, right, it's too low. So what they have to do is go through the roof, raise this up, to, and raise up the power lines up high enough to the proper height. It's always on the force. I don't know that I've ever really yeah. that. Very rare. Oh. It's the original old 50s homes mm -hmm. that hasn't ever been updated. My house. 
Do you still, we, we have to call that out. It's not the proper height. So, um, I take a picture of that panel. Over yeah. Double so, hopefully, you're learning a little bit of stuff, you know, about sure. this kind of uh, the Federal Pacific. You'll see the big sign on it. You know, if you, it's always good that if you're showing at home, look at the panel. Mm -hmm. If unless the unless the unless the labels broken off, you know, went off. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. So just a few more things here. We got water pressure. We check that. That can't be over 80 psi, right? Or it's too high. There's a way to fix that, right? You know how to fix a too high of a water pressure to the house. A plumber can come in and install a regulator at the water meter and manually turn it down to under 80. Because the 80 is what's supplied the whole neighborhood. And that fluctuates depending on how many people turn on the water, right? So, but if I if I see over 80, I don't know what that is. That's a normal reading there, 60. Um, then uh, we say it should be turned down. Most people don't care. Yes. If it's too low. Oh, I see low pressure. Why? I've never seen we used to call that out below below 40 psi was too low, but Trek says no, you don't need to call that anymore. But we do flow, water flow. If it's low flow to the because sometimes you can have 40 psi and you still get plenty of water flow. So and I don't know how you could fix low flow. If it's 40, how are you going to bring more pressure to the house? I don't know. It's the city, unless you got a clog or something, the problem. Increaser in the garage that makes the water pressure level in the house go up. In the garage? I don't know how to do that. Under, you can check the water saver off your faucet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Yeah. But the, um, but there's I don't a know. parts of town, I'm like, there's a part of University Park over by SMU that just said low water pressure. Low? Mm -hmm. And what does that do to the house? Do you think it might be a low flow to the shower? Yeah. Really bad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, but we usually don't have a problem with low. It's more high by far. Um, so, I, I you probably hear see this all the time. If we look out at an exterior hose bib and there's not one of these hose bib, this is a anti siphon little device that should be added on to this hose bib. You can buy them at Home Depot for 10 bucks or whatever, or order them on Amazon, screw this onto the hose bib, and then you screw your garden hose onto that, and that prevents any negative water pressure that might occur from your garden hose into your drinking water. Did y'all know that? Do y'all ever see those on your inspection reports? Yeah. Really? Should. Inspector's not calling it out because they're almost on every house. And that's the trek requirement. And that's just an easy fix, though. Just this what kind of one looks like. Some of these are built into the hose, into them. They're a built in. So, but anyway, I just want to let you know that's a easy, inexpensive way to have. It. What is that changer thing called? An extender? It's a it anti siphon. Anti siphon. Anti siphon. So it has a little gauge in there. So and if it ever see water always can come out this way to through your garden hose, but if it ever uh, somehow negative pressure happens. It will block the water from your garden hose going up into your drinking water. And so, that's what it is. So sure. right. Yes. But what happens if the garden hose had been in a bucket for two weeks and it's sucking up the water from a bucket? You know? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure I have. I'm still healthy. Yeah. Who knows? That's what Trek says to do. Yeah, we 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 check the jetted tub. You know what they call it, Trek? Hydro massage therapy equipment. Really? We're Texans. Why can't we just call it a jetted tub, right? I have to explain that every time I do an inspection. It's a jetted tub. We fill it up. You know, you got to have a dedicated GFC out of that. You have to have an access door to the motor. Lots or that's, that you, you know, it's all tiled in. So there's no way to get to the motor if it goes out. So we have to call that out as say no access yeah. and function of it. But man, sometimes when you test those things, yeah. you turn them on. All kinds of crap oh, comes okay. out. <laughs> and then I have to stick my hand down in there to do the drain. So there's some, it's not. Anyway. That's why you shouldn't use those. Anyway, it's a, uh, yeah, of course, water heaters, we check and we don't have time, but there's tons of stuff about water here you can call out. No, see, there's no uh, drain pan. 
my house, I had a house flood on it. Have you ever house have water here leak? If you haven't, you're you're lucky. Flooded my whole house. Didn't have a drain pan. So, but anyway, we have to have the TPR valve. You know what the TPR valve, temperature yeah. pressure relief valve is? is? Well, it's not actually in the picture. Well, it, it kind of is. Right here. See that? That's it's a little temperature pressure relief valve. Some of them are up on top of the water heater, but it's a valve that if there's too much pressure that builds up or the, or the water gets too hot like to the boiling point, that will open up, activate, and relieve this hot pressure, steam. And this is supposed to have, you can see the discharge pipe, I don't mind adding one to this because see the, the discharge pipe should go to the outside. Because if you don't have a discharge pipe and you're standing next to it and that steam goes off, you can burn yourself. Mm. So that's a hazard that we have to call out and there's proper, you have to have a certain type of pipe, copper, or just can't have a PVC pipe because it's not designed for hot. Stuff like that. But that's a temperature pressure relief valve. Of course, well, that's a big one. That would be like telling the sellers, hey, you got carbon monoxide. I've seen these in next to the kid's bedroom with this yeah. disconnect. A lot of times when they put new roofs on, you know, all the rattling and stuff, this gets disconnected, nobody knows. And then you're like, carbon monoxide. Oh, man, this is, we got a quite a few minutes. But anyway, we're supposed to determine the type of water heater, if it's gas or electric, and the size, how many gallons it is. And then read the label, and I, we put in the, the age of it. All right. So here is windows. We check. You know how tempered glass? What that is, you know, like on your cars, if you break it, it goes in little bit pieces, right? Well, you're supposed to be tempered glass in certain areas of the house too. So um, like a window a certain size, like nine square feet total, if it's by uh, stairways or, and if it's, the only way you can tell if it's a tempered glass or not is by this little engraving on the corner of the window, it says tempered. That's the only way you can tell. So like these glasses should be a little tempered little engraving on it but if i don't see that and it's supposed to be in one of these areas i might have to call out that i don't think this window is, is tempered for safety reasons like a real low one and you're in a dining room and you lean back and you fall you better hope that's tempered glass right so is that is that new when was that no that's been here since i've been here seven years no so that's new but i mean oh. but if, if it's an older house like yeah, if you see these really old houses with these really big windows and their original windows, they're not tempered. Yeah. Inspector's supposed to call it out, but, but, but this is a track of what? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, absolutely. First say it's it's all safety. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So of course you look for broken. And then you know the fogged windows. Mm -hmm. Those are we we are generalists, general. We try to say as many as we can with we receive, but we just say we might not have found every one of them because sometimes it's dirty or it's real humid out. You can't tell all the time. So but we look for, for fogged windows too. All right, so this is the infrared scan. This is what I'm telling you about. Uh, I was scanning a house. That's why we like to scan the whole house. I'm running across, this is in a living room. This house is only three years old. And I see this purple line here. I'm like, what the heck is that? Not expecting it at all. And I look on the wall and it's just a normal looking wall. I'm like, okay, I don't see anything. So I run my water, my moisture meter along the wall and right when it goes over this, beep, 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 that's a water leak. Wow. I go up in the attic and I'm looking around. I said, I don't see anything crazy argus. So we need somebody to come out here and like, look at this. Sure enough, there was a flashing that was leaking that a roofer did. It was so cheap, he didn't even charge to fix it. So I'm surprised, <laughs> but I asked the agent later, I said, what happened with that? It was just a little leak. So now if I wouldn't have seen that with infrared, what happens if they move in and then it keeps leaking, what's going to happen? Mold, mold. Mold, what? Now they're going to start replacing the walls and it's a big expense. So I saved them a lot of money by them adding to the premium package because of that. So sometimes you see, and you helped them out. You got them a, a better deal on the house. So then, then here's a overheating a breaker, which is that's one I just took off online. But 
So we scan the electrical panel, make sure nothing's overheating. We have everything turned on, the oven and the air conditioner. And so that, so what's, what caused that to be overheated? Gosh, it could be a defective air conditioner unit. It could be wrong size wiring. It could be the wrong breaker going bad. There's lots of stuff. Okay, we're about 10 minutes past noon. Oh, are we? Yep, okay, yep, we're done. If, is there any, any last slides you want to yeah. share? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, yep, yep. Yep. I know we got started a little late. There you go. Yeah. So this is a sewer scope inspection real quick. So that's me in my house there. I was just kind of doing practicing at my house when I first started doing it. And these are just some things that you can see with the sewer scope that you potentially could see. Roots growing in there. What? There. The, oh, this? That's, that's just roots growing in there. You see all kind of crazy. See, like, look at that middle. Right? I had a, one of my inspectors did a brand new house and they staked the tree and they staked this, the stake right through the drain line, the sewer drain. Oh. So how would you have known that without doing a sewer scope? Mm -hmm. Even on a new house, you know, all the construction mm -hmm. debris. Those really are but, yeah, so it's uh it's it's just yeah because it, like I said it could cost you 20 grand to replace mm -hmm. that and all we do is run water for like a few minutes you don't know but anyway that's uh that's the the the, the class but just briefly I want to go over what we do and uh, we carry a million dollar insurance policy Trek only requires a hundred thousand so we have over 500 franchises throughout the US and Canada we're in the top 25 we're in the top 20 now we got over 300 five-star google reviews we cover the whole entire dfw area and we can usually get an inspection done within 24 hours completed handed to you and we have to have a spanish-speaking inspector this is the re this is the report that your client will get so we bring our printers in we print it out when they come at the last hour we just say here you go here's your report so this report, this binder is real nice. We put a picture in here or a code of excellence. Here's the report right here. We go through this report well. And then we have like a seasonal maintenance checklist. It's a checkoff guide to keep the home maintained. You're good. I get I know we started late. Yes, the summary is in the very front. Okay, good. It's the very front is the summary right there. We don't put anything in red or anything like that. You know, to, the summary, of deficiencies. summary of deficiencies is right in front of the report. But anyway, it's got record keeping and maintenance tips. And um, so it's really nice. Will, um, you, will you be sending us an email with your with the maintenance things that you write? Yes, uh, absolutely. I'll uh, send that to you. The last thing I want to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got it on your sign sheet. Yeah. Good. Yep. I'll, I'll send you all an email of the checklist and put the thing in track. The last thing you got is that big brochure there. That's a cost guide. That's great. This thing, I have hundreds of agents that really like it because it's a useful tool sure. to give them an answer if you if they ask you how much something costs. So um, just it's a handy tool. And they get one in the binder too. They get a cost guide. So that's who we are. Sure, sure did. Thank that you so much. much. Did that, was that kind of helpful a little bit? Yeah, sure. oh, yeah. yeah? good. Yeah, I know we run out of time. It's hard to throw so much stuff in an hour. I know. <laughs> Especially when we have questions. I know, I know. So. Do you have any more of those cost guides? I do. Oh, you can have mine. Yep. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, one other thing. Who wants? All the goodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check this out. All right. I got all kind of markings. Look at this. <laughs> So you know you, the way you fold it up, uh -uh, it's the trick. So you'll get frustrated and go the way. So what you gotta do, put two thumbs up like this, put thumbs up, and then put one thumb over the other, see how kind of you gotta have a oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 So that's the way you fold it up. And Where do I'm gonna risk it? <laughs> and these are cooling pads, so I know it's smells, huh? Oh, so if you want it, you kind of get away and you can pass. Yeah, those are awesome. So do I want to? So I you want to try it? Here, I got more. <laughs>